Hey guys. Okay, so we're gonna do a story out of our What Your Tiger Needs to Know book. This is going to be one of your literature stories. It is really important because this story is going to be on the end of your testing. So you want to at least have some familiar, um, from familiar, familiar, familiarity with. There we go. Get that word out, kind of. Okay, so it's going to be talk, and on my book, it's going to be on page 26. So if you have the book, you can find it. It's the story right here, talk, on 226, and I'm going to read it so you guys can follow along. Now, it's important to know that this story came from Africa. Okay, they're going to ask you where and what African story came. It talks about all these different things, and you're going to say the story was taught. So here is how, here's the, um, the preface to the story. So talk is a folk tale from the Ashanti people, also called Asante, who live in West Africa. It was, it is what is now called the country of Ghana. Many Ashantis are farmers, and the major crops include cacao, a main ingredient in chocolate. And as you will see in the story, yams. To better appreciate a detail near the end of the story, it may help to know that the Ashanti people had a tradition. Almost every Ashanti man and Ashanti woman owned a carved wooden stool. Because, besides being very useful, the stool, according to tradition, embodied the owner's spirit. So the spirit was in the stool. That's what they believed. Okay, so now I'm going to start the actual story. Once, not far from the city of Accra, on the Gulf of Guinea, a countryman went out to his garden to dig up some yams to take to market. While he was digging, one of his yams said to him, well, at last you're here. You never weeded me, but now you come around with your digging stick. Go away and leave me alone. The farmer turned around and looked at his cow in amazement. The cow was chewing her cud and looked at him. Did you say something? He asked. The cow kept chewing and said nothing, but the man's dog spoke up. It wasn't the cow who spoke to you, said the dog. It was the yam. The yam says, leave him alone. The man became angry because his dog had never talked before, and he didn't like his tone besides. So he took his knife and cut a branch from a palm tree to whip his dog. But then the palm tree said, put that branch down. The man was getting very upset about the way things were going, and he tried to throw the palm branch away. But the palm branch said, man, put me down softly. He put the branch down gently on a stone, and the stone said, Hey, take that thing off of me. This was enough, and the frightened, the frightened farmer started to run for his village. On the way, he met a fisherman going the other way with a fish trap on his head. What's the hurry? The fisherman said. My yam, my yam said, leave me alone. Then the dog said, listen to what the yam says. Then when I whipped the dog with the palm branch, the tree said, Put that branch down. Then the palm branch said, do it softly. Then the stone said, hey, take that thing off of me. Is that all? The man with the fish trap asked. Is that so frightening? Well, the man's fish trap said, did he take it off the stone? Ah! The fisherman shouted. He threw the fish trap on the ground and began to run with the farmer. And on the trail, they met a weaver with a bundle of cloth on his head. Where are you guys going in such a rush? He asked them. My yam said, leave me alone for the farmer. The dog said, this is what the yam says. The tree said, put the branch down softly. The branch said, the branch said, do it softly. The stone said, take that thing off of me. And then the fisherman continued. The fish trap said, did he take it off? Oh, that's nothing to get excited about, said the weaver. No reason at all. Oh, yes, it is, said the bundle of cloth. If it happened to you, you'd run too. Wah, the weaver shouted. He threw his bundle on the, tail on the trail and started to run with the other men. They came panting to the ford in the river and found a man bathing. Are you chasing after a gazelle, he asked them. The first man said breathlessly, 
my yam my yam talked to me and he said leave me alone and my dog goes in the to the yam and then i cut my branch myself at a branch with a tree and put the and put and the branch the tree said put that down and and the branch said do it softly and the snow said take that off of me the fisherman panted and my trap said did he the weaver wheeze and my cloth spoke too well is that why you're running the man the, in the river asked well, wouldn't you run if you were in their position? The river said. The man jumped out of the water and began to run with the chiefs. The others ran down the main street of the village, of the house of the chief. The chief servants brought his stool out, and he came and sat on it and listened to their complaints. The men began to recite their troubles. I went out to my garden to dig yam, said the the farmer said, waving his arms. Then everything began to talk. My yam? said, leave me alone. My dog said, pay attention to your yam. The tree said, put that branch down. The branch said, do it softly. And the stone said, take it off of me. And my fish trap said, well, did he take it off? The fisherman said, and my cloth said, you'd run too, the weaver said. And the river said the same. And the bather said hoarsely. The chief listened to them patiently. He couldn't refrain from scowling. Isn't that mean face from scowling? Now, this is a really wild story, he said at last. You'd better all go back to your work before I punish you for disturbing the peace. So the men went away, and the chief shook his head and mumbled to himself, Nonsense. The things like this upset the community. Fantastic, isn't it? said his stool. Imagine a talking yam. Isn't that silly? So everything was talking in the story. Everything came to life and everything was talking. And this is the story of the talking yam. And it comes from Africa. And the story is called Talk. It's called what? Talk. You want to remember that for your end of the year testing. All right, guys, you're good to go. I'll have a story for you tomorrow.